The first to my exclusive interview with Labour MP Rosie Duffield. Here's what she said about her leader, Sir Keir Starmer's inability to define what a woman is. More people in this country are women, and women will knock on doors, campaign, donate to parties and vote. And if women don't feel that we're represented, that's a serious state of affairs politically. And I had met with Keir. I think the aide who talked about me said that I was always, always in and out of his office. I met with him once. When you see the leader of the party, Sir Keir Starmer, unable to say whether people with penises are women, what was your reaction? I, I, speechless, really. I mean, it just seems kind of mad. You know, it's dystopian. I don't, I don't know what to make of it. Half the time it sort of seems funny. Half the time it's really scary. Well, strong words there. Dystopian and scary. Uh, well, we're packed tonight to discuss all this. Let's talk to TV political editor Kate McCann, Daily Mirror associate editor Kevin Maguire, talk to TV contributor Esther Kraku. Welcome to all of you, our stellar panel. Kate, I mean, this is quite a damaging ongoing problem for Sir Keir Starmer. And when you have someone like Rosie Duffield, who clearly just calmly talked me through what's happened to her mm -hmm. after she actually liked one of my tweets, uh, mocking the sort of terrible use of language about women these days. If you're Sir Keir Starmer, you can't even define what a woman is. You have a woman MP being vilified, shamed, hounded, and now apparently just thrown to the walls by your party. It's damaging, isn't it? It's really damaging. And what Rosie Duffield was saying to you about how there are a lot of men in the Labour Party, almost all of the jobs at the top, she listed them, yeah. are men. Not just that, but they're men from London. And the point she's making is that there are lots of women around the country who don't agree with that point of view mm. and who will vote for the Labour Party. And her point about, you know, working class women are more likely to end up in some of these prisons where there are questions about who else is going to be in a prison with them. That's something she feels very strongly that she's there to represent. And I think the fact that this week, the optics of, of what we saw in the House of Commons from Lloyd Russell Moyle and other MPs, and the subsequent... I mean, it wasn't exactly a, a deafening chorus of people coming to her aid. Well, I think there have been... I, I mean, I've written a column for The Sun tonight about this. There have been four things in one week. Yeah which I think constitute, Esther, a, a, this ongoing war against women. One, the Brit Awards yep. having this ludicrous decision to go gender neutral and then all the nominations for Best Artist being male, yep. an own goal of spectacular proportions where women are the victims. Then you had this shocking story of this transgender rapist mm. who actually was a man when he did the raping. Then when he goes to trial, suddenly identifies as a woman, and it's now going to be transferred, apparently, to a woman's prison. Well, this person, I don't know what we legitimately call this person, yeah. because I'm they not buying it. They well, apparently. his ex-wife has come out tonight in the Daily Mail online, and she was married to him, uh, has no time for him at all, but says he's just pulling... Well, this is all a sham, she says. Yeah. Uh, it's a sham for attention, easier life in prison. When I saw photographs of him dressed as a woman, with a blonde wig and pink lycra leggings, I fell out of bed laughing. The trouble is, it's not actually funny mm. because he will now be this serial rapist put into a woman's prison where he will be around women he could potentially assault. Well, this is this is this is, and that's what Rosie misogyny. Duffield was talking about in Parliament: yeah. safe spaces for women. When male Labour MPs hounded her. Yeah. I mean, this is the real misogyny. And you notice how men don't have this problem. It's not men being shouted down. It's not men's spaces that are being invaded. It's not men being told that their categories need to go. It's not men that are questioning whether they're going to have trans men, mm -hmm. you know, prisoners in their prisons. It's always mm -hmm. women. And it's only women dealing with this. It's only women whose sports, uh, you know, categories are being completely muddled now. And we are bearing the... Well, I was going to say, the other, two, the other two things that have happened, one, you've got World Athletics saying they're not going to ban trans athletes from women's sport, just want a reduction again in testosterone which has no impact on body mass and yeah. so on. And then you have these horrific scenes up in Scotland where protesters were actually urging the decapitation of turfs, of turfs who are basically any woman that stands up to the ultra-trans lobby yeah. in their demands for what actually constitutes, in my view, a new unfairness and inequality. But this is the patriarchy. This is the, the new form of the patriarchy that we're fighting mm. against because no one else has to deal with this. No one... I mean, the fact that, you know, Jess Phillips um, in, mm. in the Commons didn't say anything, didn't actually publicly support um, her colleague, but she's done so much work with domestic violence victims that have, have, right. have happened to be women. It's, it just shows how far this madness has gone. Kevin, what is... What's wrong with Keir Starmer here? Why can't he just come out and support women? The Labour Party is supposed to be 
the progressive party that is pro-women's right. Yeah. We can all see there is an ongoing erosion, both in the way we talk about women, the use of the word woman itself, women's rights in sport in the sporting arena, and so on. These are pretty well unarguable things that are going on. Why can't the Little Labour Party come out and defend even his own MP, who's being hounded like this? I think he's going to have to, at some point, address the issue. In politics, any question, you can do three things. You can confront it, you can concede it, or you can change the conversation. And at the moment, he's always seemed to want to change the conversation because you have a conflict of rights. You have the rights of women, then you have the rights of trans people, particularly trans women, who say they were born essentially in the wrong bodies. That's what they say. You can't change your sex, but you can change but your But I gender. think... And it's you quite, can see... But to me, if I was leading the party, I said it's quite straightforward. I want equality and fairness for trans people, mm. uh, unquestionably, but not nope. if it actually infringes and damages existing see, women's rights. And I, I, I'd agree with every word of that. But so I think have... Rosie was right. I think so anybody... Have... Yep. Everyone I've met, every yep. woman I've met, honestly, in the last two years, agrees with that. Yeah but they will approach it differently. Now, Rosie Duffield doesn't speak for all women in Labour. Look, half the shadow cabinet, the, t the top team, are women. More than half Labour MPs yeah, the, the, the leader are, women, a woman. are women. So uh, there, yeah, are lot, there are a lot, there are lot, there are lot of women in the parliamentary Labour Party, and they will not all agree with the tone and the approach of Rosie Duffield. But I agree, there should be no discriminant in employment, no discriminant well, I found her tone in, in health, no, not I in education. I found her tone very reasonable, but, very respectful. But there is the question remotely of sport and women's places, like changing rooms, refuges, prisons. prisons. The, these prisons. questions are, have to be addressed. But in a way, it's probably the nastiest debate in politics at the moment, were people screaming on both extremes? It's also, I've got to say, I think, Kate, it's the most cowardly debate. I mean, Labour, all right, they have a male leader, but next to him in PMQs today, Angela Rayner and Rachel Rees, mm -hmm. two experienced senior female politicians. Where are they? Honestly, they, keep, they all talk about women's rights all the time. Here is one of their own women being abused by male mm -hmm. colleagues in the House of Commons for standing up for safe spaces for women in a week when a multiple rapist is now being sent to a woman's prison yeah. after raping two women. For, for a month's segregation and Because assessment. he puts his and hand up and says, yeah. I'm transitioning. But he, but he's because his ex-wife says he's just Pears, scamming everyone. Pears, he's, he's, got, he's been sent for a month in segregation mm. for assessment. Why does so he need to be assessed? Why is he going there at all? Why does he need to be assessed? He's because, a man. Because, because, by the way, because. You're, calling him, you're calling him he. Yeah, I've well, just said him. I mean, the yeah. truth is, his ex-wife thinks the whole thing is a total scam. If, if he wishes to be addressed as there, I'll call him there. But I, because he's a rapist, the way he raped two why women... Should we, oh, why shouldn't the, we afford the this way, person any the way respect? To, I mean, honestly, the way, we're talking about this, isn't it? But why, why should I care yeah. about using the right pronoun for a multiple rapist? Would you, who his own ex-wife is saying... Because, you would, well, because if, you, if you're going to conduct this everybody. debate... Yeah. If yeah. you're going to conduct this debate yeah. with respect then even though you feel incredibly strongly about what that person did, and everybody will, mm. you do have to afford them the same respect. I don't agree. Well, I, I don't think know, if why you're... Should I? Why should I because care I think, what because pronouns I think this are is multiple the problem. rapists? Because, because I think this is the problem yeah, is. with, with is this debate, and, and this is where it gets very tricky. Oh. And, and to drag it back to the politics, I found it fascinating today that Keir Starmer, at a point when the Prime Minister is under incredible pressure... We were talking about Nadim Zahawi quitting yeah. half an hour before we yes. walked into PMQs that the Labour leader decided to use his first three questions in PMQs to talk about Zara Alina. Yeah. And he described the person who murdered her as a woman-hating thug. Now, that's something that he was very happy to talk about. Yes. And particularly identify that I am against, you know, women hating, yeah. this crime is awful. And I think that's an indication that Labour does know it has a problem, but it doesn't yet know how to solve yeah, it. because it there's finds... a lot of hatred being spewed about Rosie Duffield who is standing up for women's yeah. safety, which is the very issue he led on in PMQs when he probably should have gone for yeah. Nadim Zahawi. But if you're going to make your issue women's safety and women's rights, why are you throwing to the walls one of your own MPs because then who has literally been terrorised and had death threats? Because I think, I, think it's, I think for political parties and maybe for lots of people watching this, it's a deeply uncomfortable and difficult issue and, and people don't always know how they feel about it and they don't always feel comfortable articulating it in case they get something wrong. Esther, Esther part of the problem is I think there's a kind of terrorism that goes with this trans debate where anyone who dares to challenge any of it gets immediately targeted in the most hateful way, whether it's J.K. Rowling, Rosie but Duffield, think... me, if I did, when I do my things. Yeah. Yeah, and it comes back to... It's an interesting debate. So Kate says 
look, if you're going to have a reasonable debate about this, even if it's a multiple rapist, we should respect their choice of pronouns. To which my response is, I've just read this interview with this person's ex-wife who says this whole gender transition is a sham for attention and yeah. easier life in prison. Mm -hmm. I'm damned if I'm going to respect his personal pronouns a, if, if he's just a scam to avoid justice. If it's a sham, if out. it's a sham, then exactly, then the processes are... Will he be found no, out? How do you prove so somebody's not sham, actually wanting to be a woman? If it's a sham, then the processes that we have in place to ensure that somebody who is faking it should pick that but up. But this and is if what I have a problem but Hang on, but hang on, but hang on. Happen, that's not right, to... because the process at the moment is allowing a rapist, a male rapist of women, simply because they've said, I'm now turning into a woman, OK, you go to a woman's prison where there may be more targets for you. Well, no, that se process is failing women. He's, he's in segregation for a month. For a, why at all, Kevin? This, this is what I have an issue why with. Why at all? Why are we dedicating state resources to this? With all due respect, I don't yeah, think the well, gender identity of prisoners should matter. Yeah. Your crime is what you're being punished for. There are two prisons, male and female. Your gender identity doesn't come into this. Well, i got to say... That's your own business. Look, you have that separation. It does matter. 